right here. Right here. Now that one's hooked up. That one's hooked up right there, y'all. Catch up with him here. I've had a few false starts to this video, but we're finally getting it going now. I'm under a balloon again today in a backwater creek. This is a bite I got on in yesterday, which should have been the last video. Need a second here. Let me land this, and I'll tell you where I'm at and what I'm doing. This is a that's a smaller blue to start today. Like I said, I've had some false starts here. Some fish pecking at my baits and pulling my balloons under, but not committing, not hooking up. But we finally got us one here that's big enough to get the bait and the hook. This one is on a, a skipjack head. That's what this one ate. Hopefully we're going to get it back. I'm hoping it's in his mouth there. Yep, yep. Oh, oh. You can see that head down in his mouth there. I mean, he choke that thing i'm gonna pull it out of there and take a look at it if it's in decent shape i'm gonna use it again you can see it's been i'll probably switch that out it's been chewed up pretty good but here's our first landed fish of the morning i don't know what bite that is i've had there he goes i was saying though i've had several bites this morning just fish nipping at my baits pulling the balloons under well, that was the first one that was probably big enough to get the bait and the hook. And this one here is getting hit now. I don't know if you can see my other balloon back there or not. But I've got my baits. Well, I've had my baits probably 30 to 50 yards here behind me on the kayak. And I'm in a backwater creek. It was getting hit again. Uh, I started in the back of this creek two to three feet deep. And this is a long creek system. And I'm just trolling my way out of You can't see right now because it's still a little foggy out here. I didn't film an intro when I got out here this morning because it was still dark and, and really foggy. But again, to start in the back of this, set my speed, you know, 0.3 to 0.5 and just slowly trolling my way out. Right now I'm in 4.8 feet here. And this creek will get, you know, progressively deeper as I make my way on out. But I've got my bait set about three feet under the balloons and just, you know, pulling these things along here through this backwater creek system because... Oh, oh. Is that one hooked up? He keeps hitting it. You can see my, I, my balloon's just bouncing around back there. I've got a... I've got a dink just chewing that bait up. I'll probably reel it in in a second when I cut another skipjack and just replace it because I'm sure it is destroyed by now. But um, yesterday I went out and fished a different creek, a different backwater creek system, and had an awesome trip. Got several blues, got some better quality fish, especially for this time of year in June. We're in the spawn here in East Tennessee, so better quality fish are harder to come by but yesterday was a really good day and i thought this is a uh, when you look at this area on a map different section of the river here but the creek system here looks very similar to the one i was fishing yesterday so i thought you know what i'm gonna just come out and try it and and pull some baits through here and see what happens so i got out here you know a little before dawn and got these baits in the water and hooked up with one already. So I'm gonna quit flapping my gums. I'm gonna get another piece of skipjack. I'll, I'm gonna get another head piece here because this one, you know, if I was short on bait, I'd go ahead and reuse that. But you can see where they've ate the gills out of it. And water temps here are so warm. I mean, it's 80 degrees here in this creek, the surface temps. And so these baits, they're gonna, they're gonna bleed out a lot quicker in this creek system. So. That, that rod keeps distracting me. It keeps getting hit. But it's just a small fish just chewing that bait up. So anyway, let me reel that one in, get another skipjack cut, and we'll get some fresh baits out there and hopefully get on some more cats today. All right, let's cut us another skipjack up. I'm gonna put another headpiece on and a midsection. I'm running two rods today, you know, both of them under the balloons. And so I'm just going head and midsection. That's a good combination. That's my two favorite cuts of the bait. Let me get that off there too. Snip them. I like snipping fins off. I've I keep mentioning it in various videos, but uh, you know, do they serve a purpose when you got a bait out there? Not really. They don't add anything to it. So if there's any chance at all for it to potentially interfere with a hook set. 
why I have them on there. But Skipjack had them just going up under the gill plate, out through one of the nostrils. And I'll set my balloon, that balloon's still right where I want it to be, about three foot or so. We'll get this one cast back out. Make sure that balloon is up a little higher. These balloons, I've just got them tied on overhand knot on my main line. And then they can slide up and down the line to adjust them, you know, wherever you want them at. So that one there is about three foot. We'll get that out there. Make a short cast there and let out some more line. Again, I'm just kind of putting them about 30 to 50 yards behind me. You know, just letting out enough line to give them a little distance there. And I'm going to cover the length of this creek today. That's the plan. Uh-oh, y'all. This one, he's hooked up now. I was just getting ready to reel this bait in and switch it out. He finally got it. Or one of them finally got it. This may be a little better than the last one. Well, I don't know. He's fighting hard, but looking at him splashing around behind the balloon there, I don't know if he is or not. I'm happy to, happy to get him though. You know, this is a lousy time of year to fish. My expectations are low. And yesterday was a really good day thought about going to that creek again and I thought no I want to I want to see if this bite's going on in some different creeks you know so we're trying it out today got us another one right here that's about the same size probably as the last one let me get myself that fish spun me around let me get myself going back the direction I need to so that other bait will be in good good position all right There he is, old Blue Kitty. Number two of the morning here. Thank you, Blue Cat, you was a good time. I was just getting ready to reel that bait in. You can see here, I'll show you what they've done to it. Let me slide that balloon down. Look at this bait right here though. That thing, I was just getting hit nonstop out there. I've turned the camera on numerous times thinking I had my first fish of the day and it was just a dink taking the balloon under but they have destroyed that bait so it's gonna toss it we'll put on a fresh chunk here them scale you always want to get them scales off the tip of your hook or from around your bar that'll prevent a hook set quicker than anything all right I'm gonna get this and cast out and I think we'll be back in business Look at my rod, my balloon, it's gone, man. It's gone. Catch up with him here. Oh. No, he's on there. I thought he'd let it go. He was just coming right at me. I'll look back, my balloon was gone. You could just see a wake where it was being pulled under the water. Oh, that's fun. That's fun right there. This ain't gonna be a very big fish. Well, seeing them balloons go over, it's like bobber fishing as a kid, you know. That's another, that's another blue, about what the size the other two were. Just a larger, what I call dink size. Oh boy, he's wound up. <laughs> Threw the bait off, I see it right there. That's alright, I got plenty today. Alright, let's land this thing. It's actually going to be bigger than the others, I think. We'll bring him in here, get him unhooked. And there's he's still what I'd call a dink. I mean he's got some he's got a little weight to him, but uh you know, good time. But not the beast that I'm after today and every day. <laughs> Get out of here, buddy. You were fun. That is a good time right there, y'all. I'm telling you, when you when you see your rod get hit, you know, when I'm suspending baits out in deeper water fishing. Uh, oh that one's that one's getting hit too. Got, got a lot of action back here. There's a lot of small fish just pecking and chewing. But 
you know, if I'm suspending baits under the kayak and one of them loads up the rod, the rod tip just shoots down, you know, you know you got a, a fish on here with these balloon fish and sometimes you'll get just a, a tap on your rod, you'll see your line twitch and, you know, you, you don't know until you really you look back and you see your balloon just gone and just shooting across the water <laughs> full speed and that's, that's a good time. So anyway, I'm going to get another uh, midsection there of skipjack on that rod is that one threw it off right there at the last second and we'll get it back out and catch us some more it's gonna be a good morning oh well that's a pulling now ain't it yeah he's hooked up on that headpiece he's a spinning me around <laughs> it don't take much in the kayak to get you spinning these kayaks are lightweight and these fish they pull hard get myself going way there. I'd like to keep that other bait moving the direction I want, you know, as I reel this one in. In a perfect world, anyway, that's how it go down. <laughs> let's see what this one, let's see what we got here. That's, I think that's a Slightly bigger than the others. We're slowly but surely getting bigger as we make our way out of this creek. You know, I think I'm going to get my bait back on this and I'm going to look. See what kind of condition it's in. It's been hit a few times, but it ain't been out there long. So it ain't been too terribly long between fish. Nope. Oh, lordy day. Splashed me. Probably got the camera too. Well, I'll tell you what, if I wasn't awake, I am now. This devil right here got me sopping wet. That's, a, that's the largest dink of the morning, I think, right there. Still not the golly whopper I want, but man, this time of year, it's more of a take what I can get type deal and just hope I stumble into some big fish like I did yesterday. This headpiece, I mean, it had not been out there long, but you can see in that short time, them dinks have just been down there maybe some turtles too that i've come across who knows but they've just they've destroyed it so i'm gonna go ahead and just switch it out put on a fresh piece because with me only having two rods out today i think really doing this style of fishing here two rods is all i can manage because of the the way these fish even fish that size right there i mean it just gets you spinning around and going the other way if i had more rods i'd be a tangled mess like I am with my line right here. <laughs> He's got me all twisted up. There we go. Yeah, I'm gonna go ahead and we'll put a fresh head on. Toss that one out there and appease the turtles. Maybe they'll leave me alone if I feed them, feed them my scraps. This is a smaller skipjack right here. I'm gonna take a head off of it though. Something will eat it. You probably can't see it. There's a carp right there, right there on top of my fishing line. I don't know what he's doing right there by my line. You probably can't see it though anyway. I glanced back and just and just caught him there, caught a shadow. But uh, active morning out here thus far. It's not even 7 o'clock yet, and I think that's like four fish already. So, you know, I'm just making my way out of this creek here again. You can't hardly see because of the fog, but... Uh, I'm hoping this fog lasts a little while because number one, I think that's going to keep my extend my morning bite, and two, it's supposed to be miserably hot today. So the longer we can keep this cloud, or cloud cover, fog, whatever you want to call it, uh, the cooler temperature it's going to be this morning, make it tolerable on me. But anyway, got my balloons back out there, and uh, I'm just going to follow this meandering channel on out of here and catch us some more fish. Here, y'all, right here. Mine's hooked up in a digging, buddy. I just got a bait ripped off the other one a second ago and I switched out or put a new piece on and was getting that line out and this one took off on me. <laughs> Look, these fish wait till you're distracted. So oh, I'll bite right now. <laughs> Man, it has been a pretty productive morning thus far. I mean, it's... I think five bites now, or five, a lot more bites than that. 
five fish caught, I should say. And this one's going to be a small one here, but at least the bait. The bait looks like it's still in pretty good shape, so I'll be able to send it back out. But yeah, this backwater bite, you know, that's what I was wondering. That's why I wanted to come down here and check it out, just to see what was going on. See if it was, you know, something that was isolated to that other creek I was in. Or if this is something that's going on all over the river right now. I think it's, from what I'm seeing in here this morning, I think we've got a, got a pattern going on. There he is, just a little thing. Let's get rid of him. I'm going to take this bait. The nostril on this side here is tore up. But the bait overall still really good shape, so I'm just going to go out the other nostril. And we're going to get another fish off that, at least one more. Let me get my balloon set up here. And y'all, let me just show you too while I got it. While I got it up here, because I don't think I mentioned it earlier. So on my setup here, I've got my normal my normal catfish rods, my you know chopstick master series 2.0 dial reels. This is 40 pound mainline trialing big game. Then I've got one of my leaders that you would see in my other videos. If I'm just you know using a Carolina rig and I'm and I'm suspending with you know a heavy sinker in deep water, that's my same leader down to a 10 aught must have demon circle hook. The only difference is I've removed the weight. The weight of the bait is enough to to get it down. And I've just got it under a float here, which right now I'm in seven feet, 6.9, seven there. I'm getting out here into the deeper, uh, starting to get a little deeper in this creek anyway. And as I make my way out and I'm reeling in fish, I'm just gonna set my baits down a little bit deeper each time. That way my baits are constantly you know, a few feet off bottom there. Fish that are back here in this creek system, if they're this shallow, they're actively feeding. So they're gonna come up and get a bait, even if it's higher up off the bottom than what you would normally see me do if I was suspending out over deep structure. So, got that bait out there now. I'm just gonna let out a little bit more line. And I got to finish letting my other one out over there too because I was in the process of doing that when that fish hit. And I'll be back to fishing again. I could make a good argument, you know, if you were somebody in a kayak, in a paddle kayak, for instance, you could do this with one rod. I mean, I'm doing tube here because I've got the electric motor and I can easily make adjustments on the fly here as I'm reeling in fish. But, you know, this, you could do this with just one rod. If you were pedaling or paddling and two rods is more than you wanted to deal with. But anyway, we'll get this out. We're going to catch some more fish today before this fog gets burned off and I get run off the water because of the heat. So y'all, I think I'm about to make a change out here today. So in my last video that was filmed yesterday, again, I was in a different creek. And in that particular creek, I started at the mouth of it fished my way all the way to the back, turned around, and then went back out to the start again. And what I noticed yesterday was that almost all of my bites came really shallow. The bulk of them were four to five feet deep, and I think all but one came uh, eight feet or less. And what I noticed out here this morning, I started at the back of this particular creek, and I was getting bit right away, just small dink taps, and then I got on out to you know four or five feet deep started getting on some better quality fish and actually hooking up. Now I'm out here uh, nine feet deep and I'm still seeing some bait out here, but I've dropped my, my baits that are under the balloons a little lower under the balloons here, but I'm not getting the bites out through here. And so it's like the deeper I get in this creek, the less action I'm getting. And that was the same scenario yesterday. Again, everything was four to five feet deep was the bulk of my fish. So I think what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna turn around and make another pass toward the back of this creek and just this thing, this particular creek here, you can see now that the fog's burned off here a little bit. It's really wide. I mean, me pulling baits behind me here, I can't cover a big swath of this. Now, when fish are in here in the shallows and they're actively feeding, even if they're up, say, you know, cruising the shoreline, they're chasing shad out through here, because I'm putting out a scent trail, pulling these baits behind me, they're gonna be able to lock in and come find it. But, but because of this area is just so wide, it's harder for fish to find, right? I mean, there could be fish 
way over there that just don't make it over here to lock into my scent trail. So I'm just going to kind of spin myself around, go back down toward the shallows, maybe make some laps through here and just, uh, you know, figure eights, whatever you want to call it, just to try to zigzag around and try to put my baits in front of as many fish as possible. But I think my best bet is really to focus on those three to six foot depths just to try to maximize the number of fish I get today. Oh crap, y'all, I got a fish on right here. Look right here. Boy, this fish is going sideways on me. Look at him. Oh man, he's going, he's going the other direction. Y'all, when I turned around here, I made a change. I took my balloons off and I put planer boards on in their place so I could kind of get a wider spread. I brought them with me today just to just to mess around with. Yeah, I don't really like planer boards. But, uh, you know, for this application here, I thought, you know, I'll just use them in place of the balloons, get a wider spread, and we'll try it out. See if that improves my bite at all. See if I get better quality with, with getting my baits out beside me instead of just directly behind the kayak here. Especially since I'm using an electric motor. It's quiet and all, but, you know, in the shallows like this, you don't really know how it's affecting maybe better quality fish. So I can't remember when I switch my baits around. I can't remember which which side was which. <laughs> that one is. I may end up with either two head pieces or two midsections because I can't remember. Yeah, hell, it don't matter. They hitting them both pretty good anyway. So. But uh, no, I was getting this line out. That's my other planer board. You can see it's it's the planer boards take your baits out to the side. So I've still got my baits down uh, about three feet under under the water surface. But the planer board is just acting like the balloon. It's my float, but it's taking them out to the side of me over here. And I was putting this one out, and I, I just glanced back and I saw this planer board swimming toward me. And I was like, I got a fish on there, but. Uh, Looked like something hit that then. Look at it. Look at it. I got another fish on that one right there. He was messing with it. Look oh, right here. Right here. Fish. Yep, y'all just making my way along. I'm getting back here now, five feet deep. Here where I'm at. Not real sure exactly how deep my bait was running but i'm getting back here now to the depths where i was catching fish before so hopefully hopefully the bite's about to pick back up for me because it just wasn't happening for me as i was getting out there a little deeper yeah this is another one here just a uh, just a smaller blue been the theme of the morning so far but i'm gonna make my way back here to this bridge in this creek turn around and come back out at least one more time and we'll see how hot it is at that point it's about 8 30 right now so it's uh supposed to be high 80s today i think but the humidity right now has just been ungodly this week so we've had some rain and it's felt more like july and august than it has june but you know how our weather here in East Tennessee is. If you don't like it, just wait a minute and it's going to change. Let me get this old thing. Yeah, that's that's two fish now doing this. And again, I'm just using these planer boards in place of the balloons. I could have kept the balloons on and put the planer boards up above them, but that's just... I'm lazy. That's one more step. And planer boards are kind of a pain to deal with anyway, in my opinion. I've played with them, you know, dragon baits the last few years intermittently and I always end up getting frustrated with them. It's something that's a, these planter board, here's this fish right here, smaller blue there. But uh, these planter boards, I was going to say, it's a great tool to have if you're in a boat and you can keep yourself moving straight forward at all times when you get a fish on. but what I found in the kayak is it can be a pain because I was when I first started dragging 
with the planer boards and the kayak, I thought I could run four lines, two off the back and then one on each side with the planer boards. And uh, that was a mistake. It was uh, people do it. There are people doing it right now. But for me, I spent more time getting myself set up and getting repositioned and all that because I don't care even a smaller fish like that. They hit it hard enough. They're fighting hard enough. They can spin the kayak, you know, and get you pulled off. And and so with boats, you don't have that problem because they're so heavy. You can keep yourself moving, uh, keep going forward the whole time. But um, you know, out here today, I thought it was worthwhile uh, to play with in this scenario because again, I'm just using the planers as my balloon essentially and getting them off to the side. So instead of me running right over the top of potentially some fish, now even if I do and they get pushed out to the sides of me, whoa, there's a there's an easy meal for them. So anyway, that's my thought process again. I'm just I'm just playing around out here today. I mean June every year I tend to get some better quality fish, but it's more of I feel like I catch them in spite of what I'm doing instead of because of what I'm doing. I feel like I just kind of get lucky during the spawn sometimes and, and catch some bigger fish. It's just about, it's a numbers game. It's putting in the time, putting in the hours. You put in enough time on the water, you eventually gonna put your baits in front of some better quality fish. But a lot of them right now, they're just on the nest and they're they're not they're not engaged, they're not feeding. But there are still, the, the females anyway, are still active and about. And there's some males that aren't on the nest that are out and about. And of course these small fish are, pretty plentiful uh, everywhere out here along the Tennessee River and they're a good time to catch. So uh, anyway, I'm jabbing on again. I'm putting us another bait on and we're gonna, we're gonna get us another fish down through here. I already got a skipjack out from before. So again, I'm gonna feed the turtles that tail there, just kind of a, appease them, leave me alone. Them turtles can ruin some baits in shallow water, especially if you anchor fishing. I will go through some baits. And these planer boards, I mean a planer board is a planer board. This this model here is the clear board, I guess they're called. Now, I've got videos on my channel of, of more in depth on how to use those things. You know, when I've been dragging and stuff like that. They're really simple to use. They're just I don't know, it's just one more step and I'm lazy. I like to keep my fishing simple. So, but these things that I'm, I'll, I'll talk about the other videos and here I am going over it again, but you've got this clip here, goes around your line. That keeps the board from coming off your line. And then you've got this clip that attaches to your line. And so you just set your depth here, whatever you want it to be. I'm gonna put mine there so that bait's about three foot under it. And then you just set it off in the water and start letting that line. And as you move along, that board there, the, the resistance as you move along is going to pull, is what's going to pull that board out. And you just let out however much line you want. And guys, look up here at this guy and this, this, I don't even know what you call them things. Is that a para, paraglider, parachute thing? I mean... Look, you know, everybody's got their own thing. I mean, who am I to judge people? I mean, I'm out here catching catfish out of a kayak. But every time I see one of them things, I'm like, who come up with that idea? Who's sitting around one day, drunk off their butt in the garage, thinking, you know, I'm going to attach a parachute to my lawnmower and see if I can get this thing to fly. Because that's exactly what that is. It's just a parachute attached to a lawnmower or a go-kart. And they take that thing up in the air and fly. I'm too big a pansy. You would never see me up with one of them things. We're hooked up again here, and we are. We are. Yeah, he's a digging, buddy. I'll tell you what, y'all, the bite has really slowed. I don't know why. Is it the sun getting up in the sky? The water here today, it's got some color to it, but definitely not as muddy as the creek I was in yesterday and it could just be too you know we're two days past the rain so it's going to start lightening up but uh, as the fog has burned off the sun is higher in the sky the bite is definitely slowing down but I do have another one here there he is another small but hey it's another bite and I'm happy to get him 
but you can see look at that bait i mean i've covered a fair distance here and it ain't it's in good shape it ain't been chewed on the dinks that were you know messing with me before even they're not active right now so i don't know maybe they've moved out a little deeper bite was getting worse you know the further i went along so i don't know mystery of the universe maybe i'll solve it today maybe i won't either way i'm gonna try <laughs> yeah, all this rod got hit and my balloon is under i'm just gonna crank down here until i catch up with him yeah y'all i'm on my way back out of this creek again and i decided to take the planer boards off and put the balloons back on and one see if that made a difference and two allow me to follow the old original creek bed that was here before they flooded all this i can keep my baits right in that channel itself versus the planer boards having them you know off to the sides this is another small blue seems like the quality's going down <laughs> the later we get in the morning bites are fewer and quality's worse but it's another bite and again it's a welcome sight that one was on a midsection chunk i switched my baits out when i got back here to the end of this creek and put the balloons back on so that was a fresh bait he ate get out of here old blue kitty come back when you're bigger all right i think I'm gonna put a second headpiece on because I've got this other head that's been sitting out here a little while. I'm just gonna trim its fins and that'll keep me from cutting another bait if I don't get any more because I'm not gonna fish too terribly much longer. I'm just working my way back toward where I launched. Oh, oh. Y'all, I got another fish on. Let me get this out of the way. flapping my guns I got my line wrapped around my rudder here let me make sure yeah look at my balloon out there if you can see it it's a swimmer <laughs> oh it's fun it's like sitting on a dock and watching your bobber go down except with balloons and much bigger fish too just boom boom here but again i'm in the old original creek channel so i don't know if that makes a difference or not back here it might it's worth investigating but i'm gonna have two head pieces oh because i'm gonna get this one back out of his mouth it should be in good shape and then i'm gonna put that other one on that i had there in the floor of the kayak just make sure I use it and if I have to I'll cut another skip but I'm just gonna fish right back up here to the car there he is I know I'm probably gonna call it a morning because it's already getting hot out here I ain't gonna sit out here I, I like catching these fish but no bigger than they are I ain't gonna do it in the miserable sweltering heat today <laughs> okay got that bait hooked back up I'm gonna get spun back around here and get both these cast out be fishing again well, i think we're about to get another one here sounds like i'm taking off with it looking splashing around out there under that balloon that's gonna be another small one but boy he's fired up ain't he <laughs> i could hear him splashing up under the around the surface there before i ever got turned around yeah y'all i don't know i mean i'm inclined to believe the bite is definitely slowed from what it was when i first got out here this morning but i'm getting more bites now than what i did with the planer board so it's either a directional thing you know the direction i'm pulling the baits or more likely just the fact that now i'm following the actual old creek channel versus just having my baits going through at random when i had them out there with the planer boards so who knows one of them things again it's just one of them one of them things i think about in my mind trying to process trying to 
understand these fish and why they do what they do and why I can't get more of them to bite when I want them to. <laughs> I'm going to use that bait again. It's still decent shape overall. See you, Blue Kitty. He gone. Fix my balloon back. Fix my bait back, and we'll be back in business again. I do thank y'all again. I'm just going to fish my way up here toward the car. And then probably call it a day, but I'm going to try to get me a few more before I head out if I can. Well, guys, I'm getting ready to call it here and, and pack it up and, and go get me a bite to eat. This morning's trip kind of went like a lot of my other morning trips here recently where I had a peak feeding time right there at dawn where the bite was really good and then the later the morning went on the bite kind of tapers off that's exactly how it went today just unfortunately wasn't able to find any good quality fish today had several bites got several larger dings but no what i call fun size and upsize fish but regardless i had a great time catching them this shallow water fishing here under the floats it's a dang good time i love looking back and seeing them them balloons shooting across the surface or getting pulled under adds a little to the excitement and it's a it's a real good time but i think i'm gonna get out of here and go get me a bite to eat and you know on a positive note today because none of these fish were front camera worthy all of my footage is on this one camera here which really saves me a lot of time when it comes to editing videos so always a silver lining people even when you're not catching a big fish but anyway i'm gonna get out of here i'll see y'all next time thanks for